Hi, this is Stephen Brower. I think I'm going to split up uh, Chapter 4 and Chapter 5 into a series of small videos. I'm just going over a series of concepts. In this video, I want to go over the concept of the process control block and then the different states that a uh, process can go through. Um, the process control block has information about uh, a process that is in memory. So things like what state is it currently in, you know, which of the states is it currently in. Um, when something is in the running state and then gets pushed out, either to ready or to waiting, uh, we make a snapshot of things like the registers or information about memory so that later when it returns to the running state, it can restore registers and memory to what it looked like the last time that that process uh, was running. Um, in terms of accounting, one of the other things, the process control block, uh, we'll have, well, in the old days when we would bill back customers for how long something would take to run through a system, um, that's one part of the accounting. The other thing is if we're going to be measuring throughput, then we can have information regarding, you know, how long something took to run, you know, from the time it was submitted to the time it was finished, how long did that take? Um, okay, so we'll take a look here. So a job is submitted. I know that says process, but forgive my animation. Uh, a job is submitted and it's put in the hold state. And then the job scheduler will, when it thinks the system can handle another ready job, will move it into the ready state. So the process um, at this point here, um, well, what this we're showing here is a ready state. It actually is a queue. So the process that just got brought in from the job scheduler gets into the end of the queue. Whatever is on the front of the queue is the thing that's going to go first off to the running state. Um, so when something arrives, it goes to the end of the queue. And as items get served, um, that queue you know, gets shorter and shorter until finally the process at some point is at the front of the queue. And now when the processor says we're ready to take something to a running state, then that process is brought forward. So then when it's brought into a running state, well, the process control block is updated to say it is in a running state, and then it starts to run. Now there's two, um, well, there's more than one, but what we're showing here conceptually is there are two types of ways in which this process um, can get brought out of the running state, but yet not yet finished. Uh, one is called the time interrupt, and the other one is an IO interrupt. The idea in a time interrupt, we'll see later uh, round robin, that the CPU gives a small slice of time to a process that's running. Once that period of time is up, then that process gets kicked back to a ready state. And when it comes back, it goes to the end of the queue, and then the next process at the ready queue uh, comes in, and then it gets uh, a CPU slice of time. So what will happen is, as we have multiple processes in the ready state, uh, you know, the first one comes out, goes to the running state. When it's out of time, it kicks back to the end of the uh, ready queue. Uh, then the front of the ready queue gets brought out. It, it runs for a period of time. It gets packed to the end of the ready queue. Eventually, the process that we just had previously is now in the front, and now it goes back into the running state. Well, the other reason why something may get kicked out of the running state um, is if it tries to do uh, like reading something from a hard drive, writing something to the hard drive, sending something to a printer, um, and instead of having the CPU wait here in the running state with that process, it actually then said, well, look, it can work on another process as this process waits for the input or output to be completed. So it throws something to um, the waiting state, again, updating the process control block with the status and what memory was and, and registers at the point of that time. Uh, when that input output is finally done, it is then brought to the ready state. Um, and then once finally the processor is ready for it, then it resumes in terms of the running state. Well, this will keep happening. So either the CPU cycles, the waiting, CPU cycles, the waiting. And so a process will keep jumping between these three states until finally the process is finished running. And then it goes to the finished state. And that's where the final uh, thing in terms of finished state, the accounting then is updated. This is in case the system is keeping track of um, uh, keeping track of statistics about the processes that run. So one thing that we'll be looking at is from the time a job arrives to the time the job finishes, how long does it take to go through the whole uh, process? So I know that was very quick, but this is sort of an overview of just the sort of the state diagram that we have, an overview of the process control block, and what I tried to show was that process going through the, uh, the state diagram for states.